a longer chain of joints than what was in the original demo. In the original demo, it is essentially a basic arm. So in this case, I'm going to do it for a neck. So we're talking about a lot more joints than what was in the arm here, at least twice the number of joints. You can do it for as many as you want. Uh, I've actually done it for a joint chain of about 40 joints, uh, creating about six different controls within the system, or controllers within the system. So in this case, we're going to work with, let's say, maybe a, a three, a root, uh, a central joint, and then maybe one at this far end here. Okay, so the first thing you need to do before you actually start setting up the structure is you need to make sure that your joints are oriented. And when I say oriented, I mean make sure the orientation is consistent. Even if the joints are in your main structure vary, the ones within your dual FK chain need to be of consistent orientation. So all the way up, they're all consistent except for the one at the bottom. So a quick way to fix that, switch to component mode, select the question mark so you can actually see rotate pivots, and then select that rotate pivot that you need to fix. Switch to your rotation tool, and then using your tool settings, switch it to discrete rotation. Mine's are already on discrete. And then what you can do is you can manually rotate your orientation to match the rest. Okay, so that lines up now. And so now we need to create some controllers. So before we set up, so the first thing you want to do is create your base controllers. So just for this example, I'm just going to quickly make a few simple ones. So I'm going to create a curve, which you can go to create and NURBS primitive, and you can choose circle, or you can just go to your shelves hit the curves tab and click on nerve circle. Default settings you usually have to drag them out if you disable the interactive under the creation settings. So if you go to um, nerve primitives and you disable interactive creation, instead of having to drag out every nerves object or poly object, get out. And then you can make all the adjustments you need. So I'm just gonna scale this down a little bit. And let's say that's going to be a good size for it. I'll just freeze that really quick just by right clicking in the channels box and dragging all the way down to freeze and going to a little pull down and choosing scale to freeze the scale. And do an edit delete by type history, just delete the history on your curve. And I'll quickly just give it a name, just call it control really quick just for the moment. And so for this one, what you're going to do is you're going to select the curve, press control G or command you on your keyboard, and that's going to be your first control group. So I'm just going to call this one control group 01. And so now we're going to put that first control in place, and I'll put that around the base of the neck, essentially. So I'm going to select that group, not the curve, but the group around it. As you can see, I'm selecting the curve, hit my up arrow, and then it selects the group. As you can see right here, it says control group, not curve. So now I'm going to shift select my neck, press P, and then I'm going to set all my translates to zero, and it moves it up there in the place. Once you parent one object to another, it basically inherits that object's sense of the world space. So just typing in zero for the translates, I can move. So to Make sure that my control curve is actually aligned appropriately with the joint rotation and that the group itself is aligned appropriately. I had to take that group and I had to rotate it just a little bit. So, you can pretty much attach the joints in lots of ways. I usually just parent them directly into the joint structure. So, in this case, I took the group that's around the control and I parented it to the joint that's just below the joint that of the joint that whose rotation I wanted to control. That's what we're going to set up first. The control curves control of the joints that it's aligned with first.
So let me finish making my controls. So that's our first control. We need to make two more controls. So I'm just going to duplicate that one. And I'm going to go up a few joints. Let's say one, two, three joints being controlled by that. And as you can see, when we're going up the chain here, things are rotating a bit. And that's because the orientation of those joints are changing a little bit. So what you can do is you can take your group and try to make it a, and try to align your orientation of your objects a little more. So I'm typing in zero for that rotate Z for that group, just to make it match the orientation of the joint that came before it. I can go a little further, try and make it match the joint's going to control more, at least directly. So let's say I'll make it 15 degrees on that group. Okay. So as you can see, when I select the joint, uh, the curve is around. The curve doesn't highlight because it's not actually attached to that joint. See that? It's attached to the one right before it. OK, so now I'm just aligning the orientation a little bit. Make sure you turn off discrete rotation if you need to do something a little less than what we have plugged in to discrete. So, so all those are basically aligned now. Okay, so now we need to make all the connections between the joints and the controls. <coughs> okay. So essentially I want the rotation of this joint to control the rotation of this joint. And then I want this joint to rotation to control the rotation of one and two. And then that should be it for that. So what we're going to use for that is the connection editor. Connection editor is located under window. General editors, connection editor. <coughs> You can also bring it up in the channels box by pressing control, right clicking the channels box and you can choose connection editor. You can also pull up things like your attribute editor and a few other things. Okay, so let's start with my base neck joints here. So this one's going to control one and two, right? So I need to select First that one, and then one and two. And I need to load them into my connection editor. If you actually have certain things selected ahead of time, when you bring up the connection editor, it'll automatically load them in. So let me see if I can get it to do it this time. So I'm pressing control, right clicking, and choosing connection editor. And as you can see, it whatever my first selection, it loaded in on the output side, and my second selections, a little bit on the input side, which is perfect. So, one quick way to make connections between these joints, because you want all the orientations to basically follow the others, control the others, is you could easily just <clears throat> you could easily just choose rotate and connect it to rotate and rotate. But I find sometimes that actually breaks in Maya. So even though it's a little more tedious. Not, I mean, not super slow, but kind of tedious. You want to do direct connections like this. This doesn't take that; it takes a little longer, but usually works out a little better. Make sure you're selecting Y for Y, X for X, and Z for Z. Okay, so Y, Z. Okay, next, secondary control, and it's going to, the next three joints going to control the next four, five, reload those on the other side, and once again, rotate X to rotate X, Y to Y, 
see to Z. If you want to get fancy, you can actually create like a little script that makes these connections for you. That's a completely different lesson. Okay, so our basic connections are made there. Now we need to actually set up the things that are going to control your main joints that are centered around the control. Okay, so what we need to do for that is I actually use multiply, multiply divide nodes, and in this case, we all we need plus minus nodes for this stage of the process. So to create those, you could use a command line to do it. I usually just use the hypershade to do it, which is located under Window, Rendering Editors, and Hypershade. I know that the hypershade is usually used for texturing, but there's actually a lot of great nodes in there that are also used for rigging. Because all of these nodes are just about passing values, so you can actually use them to help you actually rig things that you might have that some people might write expressions for. Now the reason I use these instead of expressions is because expressions don't always calculate the same. While these nodes, since they're actually coded directly into Maya, they're just part of the program, they always calculate appropriately. So from your hypershade, I'm going to go to Maya nodes. You want to choose utilities. Under utilities, you want to find your plus minus average node. So here it is right here. Got a little plus and minus and an A, plus minus average. Just click it and it creates your node. So we just need to create one initially. And we're gonna have we're gonna have each one of these nodes for each section. One node per section. So you're not creating a node for every single joint, you're just creating a node for every single control that you're gonna have. So in this case, we're going to have one, two, and three. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to Control D, duplicate. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to select the node, double click on it, bring it up in the attribute editor just so I can show you some more about it. So we're going to rename this. I'll call it the uh, just a short name bit plus min. And we'll call this one neck or uh, control one. How about that? Control zero one. Okay, so name your node specifically. So once we have one node, and I know I want three, it can control three different elements of the behavior. So X, Y, and Z. I actually only need two because I'm not too worried about the X. That's going to be sort of actually, no, let's do all three. So we'll do input 3D, and I'll say add new item, and it creates the X, Y, and Z. Okay, and I'll usually hit that twice to create two, because we're actually going to have two inputs. Right now, we're just going to have the, we're going to work with input 3D0 at first. So I'm going to duplicate this, control D, control D. So now we have a plus minus control 1, 2, and 3. And you can clean up your display of the window here just by going up and pressing this little button here. It says rearrange graph. And you can hit it one more time and it'll align everything in the window. Okay, so what we need now is we need to start making connections between these and essentially our main control joints. So what you can do is select your joint and then you can shift select plus minus node that you need connected to. And then you can bring it up in your connection editor. Okay. And so do the same thing here. Just expand it out. So input 3D is on your inputs. And you want to expand the first one, which is input 3D0. And then expand your rotates for the neck and connect rotate x to input 3dx and rotate x, rotate y and rotate z. So that's your first input right there. And then <coughs> you can also take the control curve 
reload it into your left side. Oops, sorry, made a little mistake. Um, you actually want to feature control into your inputs. Sorry about that. And then you want to feed the outputs from your plus minus control out to the control joint. Sorry about that. So I'm going to reload my left side and then I'll click this button that says from and switch it so that it says t uh, from to which means that now it's going to take the outputs from the plus minus node and feed that into the joint. And so under right display, tell it to show non-keyable so you can actually see all your outputs. And then you want to expand output 3D. And then you want to select output 3DX and feed it into rotate X. Output 3DY and feed that into rotate Y. And output 3DZ and feed it into rotate Z. Now, so what this has actually done is uh, it's actually connected our plus minus node is sort of the middleman for all the values being input. Now by default, the plus minus node has all of the input values are being added together. So the output is always an accumulate, it's, an, it's basically a sum of the total values being added in and that's exactly what we want. Because when we get to the second stage of our dual FK for the chain, we're actually going to connect our secondary controls into this so that you can have both controls feeding into that one joint rotation. Okay, so if I did this correctly, if I select my curve, you see the joint actually highlights this magenta color. And also if I rotate it, you'll see that the joints actually rotate. And notice all the controls are staying aligned with the object they're supposed to control, as they should be. Okay. Back in the first video, that's phase one. You go through and make all the connections for your rotates. So let's continue this. Need a bigger screen. So let's continue this. I'm going to take two. Load that in there. Select my joint for my second control level. Load that in here. And just to, since I already had this loaded in here, I'm just going to feed the outputs from this directly in real quick. And then I'll flip it and then I'll load the control in for my second net control and I'll feed its rotations out to my first input on the plus minus control node number two. Okay, and as you can see that's highly known too. And then we want to do the same thing for our last joint. So we select our last joint, re reload it in here. We can get our last plus minus node, load that in here, make sure it's feeding out. You can just click this button to switch which direction things are being fed as you're loading things in. Or you can just consistently load whatever you want to be output on, on the from side. Your call. As long as you're paying attention, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to have that feed in. So. Now the plus minus node, that last plus minus node is feeding out, and now I just need the curve to feed into the, my plus minus node, so feeding its rotates into my last control plus minus. Okay, so now at this point we can actually start setting up the second part of our dual FK with the neck. Since I have this control already loaded in, I may as well prepare to start feeding its ability to control the joints out to control the same joint chain that are in the same node. So the first thing I need to do is actually need to create a multiply divide node. 
because since we're actually going to be translating now to control the rotations, we need that translation value to be multiplied by a certain number so that the rotations happen a little faster than if I just had it feeding in the exact number that we're getting by translating that curve. If I translate it one unit, it's only going to feed one into the rotation if I did it directly into the plus minus node. So we add a multiply divide node to essentially multiply the output from the translation. So click on multiply divide, creates a multiply divide node. These, same thing, double click on it. In the attribute editor, I usually go in and call it an M div, capital D on the div. Um, but I've started getting into the habit of actually prefixing it with what it's actually for. So I'm going to, for this one, I'll say uh, neck control 03 mdiv. And this is just so that I can keep things in order. So I can tell what it's for. So I'll call this one 1 just so I can quickly control D and have it just duplicate it. Oh, right, numbers. Uh, right, if you don't put the number at the end, it actually starts numbering on its own. So I'll put the number at the, all the way at the end. So we'll call it net control mdiv01 instead. Okay, that way when I duplicate it, the next one will be 02 and 03. Okay, and so that's all the ones we need. So we only need a node for each control, basically. And actually, we may have one extra because only two of the control curves are going to translate. The one here near the base of the neck is not going to translate because there's nothing below it to control that way. So we're actually only going to need two. Okay. So let me put one aside because I don't think we're going to need one. We're pretty much going to need three and two. Okay, because the third control is going to feed into the three node, and then the second control is going to feed into the two node, and then their outputs going to be, are going to be fed into the plus minus nodes. Okay. So I'm going to take my control from the head pivot, which is our net control number three. You can rename it, doesn't matter. Load, I'm going to reload that on my left side so I have that control selected. And then I'm going to take my, my multiply divide node for the net control and feed, load that in. I'm going to feed its translates. Now, in this case, you only need two of the translate values. You don't need all three because all three actually aren't serving purpose. So, if you double check your orient, you'll see that the X actually runs up and down, so we won't be using the X at all. The only ones we're going to need are basically the Y and the Z. And another thing, if you'll notice, if you're going to use, let's say, the Z, if you're going to use the Z, to, let's say, translate to this side, then you're actually going to need the Y of the joint to rotate. So your Z is going to need to feed into your Y and Y is going to feed into your Z. Now I usually make that swap once we get to feeding the information into the joints. So for now, remember you're only using Y and Z. So X you're not going to connect to anything. So for now connect translate Y to input Y and translate Z to input Z. Okay. Then you're going to take the joint that it's going to feed into, or should I say, you're going to select the plus minus node it's going to connect into. And so for this one, we actually need the plus minus node for the second control. So you want to select that one, reload that in so that you can switch it so you can feed the outputs from your multiply divide node into 
the secondary input section of the input 3D. In this case, you're going to feed the output from your multiply divide node into the Y and Z. So remember, it's Y and Z that are feeding out, feeding in. Y is going to go to your Y, and Z is going to go to your and sorry, Y is going to go to your Z, and Z is going to go to your Y for the translates. So the translate output from the multiply divide node, remember it's crossed. Z is going to go to Y, and Y is going to go to Z. So now if I take my control and I translate it, notice that it's causing some rotation. Notice also that it's a little reversed. That happens sometimes just because the orientations don't necessarily match with the translations versus the rotation. Easily fix them. And there's a couple other things we need to do after this, but this is just the beginning. So let's go back to my multiply divide node for that one. Just double click on it. We need to figure out which one was doing that again. So if I pull my Z, you can see that the Y is actually rotating the wrong way. So on my multiply divide node, we come in and take that value and make it negative. So I'm going to make it, let's say, a negative 100. Okay, too much. So let's say let's make it negative 30. We'll make the other one just 30. Okay, so now as you can see, the translation of this curve is actually causing rotation. You can see it works pretty well. Uh, and don't worry about the alignment, we're going to take care of that too. That's the final stage of the process. Okay, so we've got that working perfectly so far. And now we need to do the same thing with the secondary control. So your secondary control is going to feed its translates into multiply divide node 2. And so it's going to be the same thing. Translate Y to Y, Z to Z. And just to get a head start on this, we could go in and change the values on our multiply divide node. I'm just going to assume this one's going to be uh, negative, like the other one. It's not a big deal if it's not, because you can always fix it later. The important part is to start making the connections. Okay, so now we need the multiply divide node to feed out into our plus minus node for, for this section. Because remember, it's feeding its values down, so it's not feeding into the plus minus node that's directly there, it's feeding into the one below it. Translations are feeding down the chain, not up the chain. So we find the plus minus node for control number one. We reload that in. We want to feed out from multiply divide nodes into the inputs, the second input node of the input 3D. And so remember, Y is going to Z and Z is going to Y. And so now if we take it and we translate, Okay, rotations are good, rotations are good. Okay, now the last part of the process is making sure that that control does not move away from the joint that it's supposed to be aligned with. This part's actually pretty simple. So, we've actually got one extra multiply divide node that we didn't use. So I'm actually going to take that one and rename it and repurpose it. So let's call this one our net control mdiv neg negative or net mdiv. Yeah, we'll call it negative neg. We'll call it number three.
And then we'll make one more. Let's duplicate it and we'll call that one negative number two. Because what it's going to do is it's going to make sure that the second, the second, and the third controls stay aligned with the joints that they're supposed to be controlling from the rotation input. Okay? And by the way, as you can see, if I rotate, it's still controlling the joints. Okay? That's part of our dual FK, is your, your ability to be able to control multiple joints in the chain. Okay, and so all you have to do for this part is we need to take, once again, our connection editor, and we're going to need our neg nodes. Let me clean this window up a bit and just reload my uh, selections. Okay. So I need these two neg nodes. I'm going to reload these into my right side, and what we're going to feed into these. We need to feed in the translates from our curves that are translating here. So we're going to directly pick up their values. <coughs> and so I'm going to reload these in. And these are going to feed in completely. So we've got our... Actually, I'll feed them in one at a time because I actually have them named the same right now. <laughs> Sorry about that. So I'm going to take my control number three load that in and have its translates feed out into my neg number three okay so x to x actually we don't even need to do x we just need to do y to y and z to z okay and then we do the same thing for control number two reload that in there and so let me uh, label this one just so it's easier. The video, that one's control 0, 2. And this one's control 0, 3. Just to make it a little clearer. Okay, so 0, 2. Same thing. Y. Give the input Y and Z to input Z. Okay, so now we have both of these feeding in to those negatives. Now we need the values of these to actually not feed out into the control, but to feed out into the group around the control. So to select those is actually pretty easy. Shift select both control curves, hit your up arrow on your keypad, or you can open the outliner and select them by name, um, but they're going to be hidden within the joint hierarchy, so it's easier to just select the curves, hit the up arrow so you get your groups, and then reload your connection editor to load them in. And so now we need the outputs from our multiply divide nodes to feed into the translates of those two groups. So basically we're going to have the output from negative 2 feed into the translate of the group. And we're going to have the output of neg, neg 3 feed into the translate of control group 3. Okay. Then the last step, for each one of the multiply divide nodes, we need to switch the input 2 value so that it's negative 1. This way it makes whatever value that is being input by our curves negative. Okay. So, if I did everything right, when I translate this curve, it should stay aligned with the joint while still controlling the rotation. Okay, so that one works. And this last one also works. Okay, so what we did here is we actually created a double transform that we're using to correct the position of the curve aligned with the joints that, that are being controlled both by rotation and translation. And so this once again is what I call dual FK control. 
both control types are constantly active at exactly the same time and both keyable.